listen, buddy, follow me. I'm telling you the truth. Apollos, he's a good guy, but if you had to choose, it's me right here. No, Paul doesn't say that. He says, listen, this is idiot. This is idiotic, although he doesn't say it exactly that way. And he's not really accusing them of being stupid, although he's almost very close. He says, listen, I was not crucified for you. Let's get one thing straight. I didn't die and come back to life. Don't waste your time following me or Apollos or Peter. There is only one person that we follow, and that is Christ himself. And if I teach you something good, go for it. If Apollos teaches you something good, go for it. If Peter teaches you something good, go for it. But there's only one person we're following, Christ, Christ alone. He is not divided. And if you divide yourselves with each other, then you will be dividing yourselves from Christ who cannot be divided. You see how essential Paul says this is? But the, the positive side of it is that when we agree, there are no divisions, and Christ is fully formed in our midst. Uh, go one more. In 1 Corinthians 11, he says this. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. He heard that from Chloe. And to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. This is important. Paul makes a distinction between divisions and differences. Agreement is supposed to alleviate and remove divisions. It is not necessarily to overcome every difference. I'll give you a quick example of what I mean by that. Right now, our church stands in a divided relationship from the Catholic Church. We're part of a church tradition called Protestant. And the Catholic Church is its own tradition unto itself. And we stand in a divided relationship with them. Some people say, can Catholics go to heaven? And I would say, yeah. I don't have any problem with Catholics, Catholic people going to heaven. But as a church organization, we stand divided from them for one main reason. I do my best to follow Jesus Christ himself through the teaching of the word. And the Catholic Church as an organization has taken a stance to follow Jesus Christ through, exclusively through, the teaching of the church through the history. Specifically, Peter. In one respect, the Catholic Church has said, I follow Peter. And so in that sense, I stand and this church stands in a divided relationship with the Catholic Church because they are trying to follow Jesus, but they are doing it in a way that we believe doesn't lead them to Jesus. It leads them through a whole bunch of human teaching. Now, I do believe that there are Christians in the Catholic Church, and so don't misquote me on that kind of stuff. And I would not be in a divided relationship with individual people, but as an organization, that is a divided relationship. However, we stand in a differing relationship with the Presbyterians. Because after all, we get people wet by baptizing them after they become Christians. And we dunk them all the way if we can. And if you went to the elements class, you know that our preferred method is cold water. But we try to warm it up. Okay, so anyway, we get people totally wet. Well, the Presbyterians don't. They baptize infants. And if you become a believer after you're an adult, they still won't baptize you. They'll just kind of sprinkle you with water. And it might even be warm. I don't even know. But, so we stand in a differing relationship with them. Am I making sense here? I would say that the Presbyterians and us are in agreement over the things that really matter, even though we have differences. And Paul says, I understand differences exist. Because some of you have God's approval over that particular thing that you stand divided, or having those differences over. But don't be divided about it. Don't let that tell you, okay, I'm over here, you're over there, leave me alone. Don't go that far. Making sense? Okay, one more thing. Agreement defeats the devil. Oh, this is big. This is big. When Christians stand in agreement... The devil loses. Check this out. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul writes, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. This 
phrase comes out of nowhere, it seems to me. Don't give the devil a foothold. That's a statement. It's a phrase that seems to me to come completely out of the blue. Because this whole passage, in fact, all of Ephesians chapter 4, from beginning to end, the whole thing is talking about relationships and unity and how Christians need to come together and work together. The whole thing. And then right here it says, we are all members of one body. And don't get angry at each other. And if you do get angry at each other, don't sin. And if you do get angry at each other, deal with it before the sun goes down. And don't give the devil a foothold. And it's like, what is that all about? Well, obviously what Paul is trying to say is that anger festers in you and me in such a way that Satan himself gets a foothold in us and in our church. Divisions let Satan come in. And agreement keeps him at bay. Does that make sense? There's one more verse that I'll show you to kind of illustrate this. Matthew 18. Matthew 18 uh, says, is it coming? There it is. Okay. Matthew 18 says, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. A lot of times we read the again part to the end. Again, if two of you on earth agree, it will be done for you. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. And we take that stuff out of context and we say, okay, that means if you and I agree that God should give me a Ferrari, he's going to give me a Ferrari, right? By the way, would you agree with me on that? Let's just, let's just test it, see if it works, right? Let's just, just, let's just bow in prayer right now and ask all together now. Give Jeff, no, please don't. I couldn't afford it. So, um, so if two of you, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. That's why I added this other little bit on the top. He said, if whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Do you have any idea what the context of Matthew 18 is? We're going to cover it in just a couple seconds if we get there in time. But it's this. It's all about forgiveness. The whole chapter is about forgiveness. And so eventually we get to this part where Jesus says to the people around him, if you forgive stuff on earth, my father's going to honor that and he'll forgive it too. If you let go of something on earth, if you loose something on earth, my Father will loose it in heaven too. And if you agree on anything, my Father will do it. He's talking about if you and I agree on the dispute that we're having, if we come back to reconciliation, if we come back to, to a kind of forgiveness and, 